I'm back. Hodgepodge Records exclusive. I mean, see what I'm saying, know what I'm saying, hear what I'm saying, see what I mean, know what I'm saying? Hodgepodgecast. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Hodgepodgecast, episode 11. I haven't done an episode since last year here in Nashville because I don't think I could top it. I got Matt back with me and, uh, and Tristan back with me, actually, from last year. Um, this is actually the kids' edition right now. No, we're starting out with the kids because they want to go swimming, right, guys? You want to go swimming? I guess. So, so Tristan... Uh, I taught you how to hold a mic last year. Can you? Can you? Do you remember? Yeah, it's like this talking. Right, and here. you killed Nirvana last year too. Yeah. Now, uh, what song do you think you're gonna get this year? A classic rock one, you know. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. everybody is this year. Anything new this year? No. No. I'm in Anything new teachers. Playing some football, I see. Yep, and we cool, started cool. basketball too. Cool. All right. Well, if you pass the mic, uh, inter- we got Cameron here. No, Carmelo. Carmelo. <laughs> I'm sorry. There's a cam- yeah, there's so many Joes, so many Camerons, Carmelo. Yes, sorry. Yeah. Uh, but from the Great White North, how how is how is Canada? It's very it's very cold up in Canada. You know what they say it's about Canada? Right now. You know what they say about Canada? Uh, they're red, white, and never blue. So <laughs> I like the big <laughs> smile on your face. You guys down there in Canada. Labatt Blue, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that might be a couple years. This is fun, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Pass the mat- mic to Matt. Sure. Let's talk to Matt for a second. Matt Gretter, everybody. Uh, second year alumni. That's correct. What's new? Anything new? Uh, I see you gigging out a lot. Uh, pretty much doing the... Uh, I'm trying to, trying to balance out two careers at the moment. Uh, being uh, a general auto technician back at home as the... Uh, as the primary source of income for me at the moment, but I'm also balancing out three bands, be permanent member of each, trying to uh, trying to get together some like online lessons with uh, upcoming students. So, uh, so if any of you out there are interested, I have my own website with all the information about the subjects I teach. So hook me up at uh, mattgreder.com. Mattgreder.com, everybody. And uh, other than other than that, just uh, trying to. Trying to make a full-time career in Nashville as a session and touring drummer. That's awesome. Pretty Best much ex- of luck to you. Pretty man. much exactly what uh, Rich Redmond does. You coming back next year? I plan on coming back, but uh, hopefully awesome. within the next year or two. Granted, mm-hmm. if enough uh, enough is saved up by that time, I plan on moving out here. Maybe you'll be a clinician someday. That would be a dream. Come true. Oh, definitely. All right, let's let's go to Max. If you want to pass that to Max. Okay, Max, you were at the L.A. camp. Yes. Uh, the Rich Redmond Crash Course L.A. We didn't do a podcast there. But yeah. uh, what do you like about, about you know, that camp compared to this camp? What I like about that camp is mainly that was about networking, especially in L.A. since, you know, a lot of people are big there. There are yeah, a lot they, of big But they there are a lot big of big time. people in Nashville, too. Yes, so. yeah. Let's see you. So, so if you had to pick, would you, do you like Nashville better or LA better? I would say Nashville, especially for shows and stuff. Nice. And where are you from? I'm from Virginia. Okay, so both of them are. Well, this is a little less of a hike than than, yeah. than LA. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's go to JD. Where are you from, JD? I'm I'm from Dallas. Yeah. And what what brought you to the camp? Uh, I just got a gig with a country girl. 
she was on America's Got Talent. Her name's yeah. Katie Lynn. And uh, I'm, oh, that's I'm just here a, to, that's yeah. just a gig, and uh, it's just a girl. <laughs> I, 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 I came to learn some country stuff, you know, more nice. ways to play it because he knows how to play it. Oh, absolutely. Most, yeah. Now, how old are you? Thirteen. You guys are. No, how old are you? Ten. You're you're thirteen now, mm-hmm. and you're thirteen. Thirteen, yeah. and and you're thirteen. But you were were you twelve? You were twelve in in L.A. Right? A little bit, a little bit older, a little bit wiser. So what's been your favorite part so far? Uh, I don't know. Just meeting people, you know. Yeah. I met uh, Near Z. Like, that was a cool clinic. Crazy. Yeah. Near Z. That was a cool yeah, clinic. Yeah, it's great. What's up? I didn't play, but Johannes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm just excited. It's cool meeting people, you know. I've never been to Nashville, so to meet the people who play in Nashville is cool. Because, like, Dallas has its own scene, and I've been to L.A., but Nashville's different. It's Nashville really cool. is different. It's a, whole no- it's a whole other animal. Yeah. All right, well, let's go to you, sir, because you, sir, I saved you for last because it's not like you were nine and have, like, 54,000 views on YouTube or anything. Yeah. Alex Shoemaker, everybody. In case you wondered... In case you were watching, there was a video on YouTube. Well, there's, you got a bunch of videos. Yeah. You got to hold the mic to your face. Yeah. This kid is like shot out of a cannon and still hasn't stopped. He's like, Phew. he's gone. Do you sleep? Yeah, I'm fighting back. Yeah, do you sleep? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm trying to get as much sleep as I can, but Here, I'm just going to hold the mic for you. Is that cool? Because okay, so on on your your biggest video, fifty four thousand views, is the Guns N' Roses "Sweet Child of Mine." Yeah. Okay, you're just like yeah, I'm fifty four. You know, I was nine. You you don't really pay attention to the drum set either. You're jumping at the cymbals. You're you're itching your face. You're like playing one handed sometimes. Mm-hmm. Like how do you, how long have you been playing drums? Since I was five, which was five years ago. Because you're 10 now. You were 9 in the YouTube video. There's 14 dislikes on your video as of like an hour ago. Mm-hmm. What do you think of the? Why do you think people disliked it? Because there's people that are jealous and people that hate me because I have, like, I play drums a lot. And there's people, you know, because I'm getting to do all this stuff, like, you know, meet all these cool people, like all these rock stars, you know. But, that you know, there's jealous people, and I understand about jealousy because... Jealousy is a thing that you'll have to live with the rest of your life, you know. I mean, and guys that, you know, if you're out there and you're like a drummer like me or something, live, like, you have to live with jealousy if people are jealous of you. This kid's 10. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know some of you, you're around his age, but, like, where did you come from? What, plan, what planet are you from, Alex? Planet crazy. Planet crazy. <laughs> So, are you? Do you have big plans of? You're from Pennsylvania, as am I. Do you have big plans for uh, your next video? What 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 are you thinking about covering next? Mm, I really don't know. I was gonna do a Frankie Ballard song. Yeah. yeah. Nice. What uh, what's your favorite band? Well, do you have a favorite? Band? I have lots of them. I don't think I can pick a favorite. Give me a couple. Right now. I'm sort of liking to like Green Day a little better and yeah. Saliva a little better. Saliva, that's yeah. an, that's an old old. Uh, yeah, that's, old yeah. Country, not too old, but. Country, it's Jason. Definitely. Yeah, Jason. Jason. Yeah. Now what? Now I didn't ask you guys. Let's go around quick. Uh, what's what's what is what what are you listening to right now? A lot of country and rock, you know. And then for my band, I play everything from like Elvis to. So like Guns N' Roses, so I have to practice and listen to all that stuff. You know? Did your video nice. get blocked too? What? Did your video get blocked too? No, not yet. Because oh. everybody's video yeah. Yeah. on Facebook, like getting more people. Yeah. Getting copyrighted for their videos. Like, because of like, copyright. From now copyright on. is the thing here that has been going on for the past like I don't know how many years. Yeah, but now copyright, now. they stand with copyright and they say copyright because they don't want people copying their songs, you know. Because they they would rather have them play the music than other than kids and people playing the music. But don't you think like you're the future, and you're so you guys are so young. Like your videos should not be blocked. You know what I mean? Like you're trying, you're paying the artist respect, and then like these record companies are just stepping on you and just. A lot of it's automatic. 
a lot of oh it, yeah, yeah yeah because they like have YouTube, those algorithms that just block it because it detects a song in it and then they just think oh we have to yeah, stop have to do it like and a block like it drumless track and like not the actual singers if I want to post a video now do you ever fight the copyright well I, do you ever dispute so the copyright I, I tried for copyrights sometimes. You can put the video back online, but I think they will block it again. Yeah, you I know, tried to post my video that, you know? that got copyrighted again, and it wouldn't let me. Because so. what I think of copyright is I hate copyright. I, I wish copyright wasn't even a thing. Because, like, whenever you're watching TV, you can read below, and they even say if, if there is any copyright, any use of copyright, you know. You know, they'll do something about it. But you you're know? not really, you know, you're not really plagiarizing anything. You're giving a tribute. You're doing, you know what I mean? You're doing... Yeah, you're covering a song. And I don't know why they're not doing it to all these bar bands, but still, I don't... But, they, I mean, they're doing it to videos on YouTube, and, I mean, it's still the same thing, but it's just more people watching the video because YouTube is a worldwide thing, you know? And it's going for more people. And, like, I don't understand why in bars they... they and, like clubs and all those places and festivals why well, whenever bands cover it i don't know why that's not considered copyright because they're doing the same thing but just with less people i think you need to be on the board of youtube and just shut all this down <laughs> i'll make right say that, that will say that we don't need copyright for youtube matt grader can go do it <laughs> so what what kind of music are you listening to I listen to mainly rock, but I could really listen to anything. So, because um, right now, um, my band, we're just kind of figuring out songs. So one of the songs is Lady Marmalade. That's a pretty good song. Interesting. And it's not rock. Right. And it's, it's kind of, we're just trying something different, you know, just yeah. to see how... Well, that's the thing, react. you know, you need to be put out of your element in order to, you know, get better. Yeah. It's, it's good to be uncomfortable. Yep. Definitely. Maybe not necessarily thrown in a spot and be uncomfortable, but when you're first learning a song in practice, you know, it's it's good to be uncomfortable yeah, for a bit. What about you? What are you listening to? Uh, I listen to everything. I mean, I like a lot of fusion stuff, like jazz, fusion. I play a lot of that. Uh, I also play in a hip-hop group, and... Uh, I listen to. I'm trying to listen to more country right now. Yeah. And I oh, yeah, always listen good. to classic rock, like Zeppelin, with my dad all the time. So just like everything, awesome. really, <laughs> there's no limit to what okay. I listen to. It's always anything. Awesome. Well, thank you. You guys want to go swimming, so I'll let you guys I go swimming. Still, I have one more th statement. To yeah, talk one about. one more statement. Alex Shoemaker has one more statement. Maybe two. I don't know. Oh. But whenever you go into Nashville, Nashville isn't just a country kind of place it's not no whenever you walk in the bars or clubs they're playing classic rock like journey foreigner guns and roses you were playing journey on the piano earlier i didn't know yeah you he was playing piano. don't stop believing outside That's on the funny. grand piano i don't you know it's nashville you guys should come check it out but absolutely come to nashville yeah. alex shoemaker said so 10 hour drive for me but so Carmelo, what are you listening to right now? Uh, I listen to a lot of country and classic rock. Like new new country and then classic nice. rock. And then Matt, you're you're I, I like rock and country, right? Little country, a little bit rock and roll. Yeah, th those two are, those two are my primary genres. Um, what I do with uh, with my current bands that I'm with, it's all original music that we're doing. It's nice. It's coming back. I think original music is. I mean, cover bands are blowing up still. You know, people want to hear. You know, whenever you listen music. to Chris Stapleton, he is sort of the guy that is bringing back old music. You know. Exactly. Yeah, like I love his music and the way he does it. You know, like it just brings you back to like a Merle Haggard moment or something. You know, with the kind of part of it or Charlie Daniels or. Well, see, I like the I like the rock band Highly Suspect. They're bringing back like that '90s Soundgarden. Have you heard of Highly Suspect? Or um, Highly Suspect? Anyone? Heard of Highly I don't know Suspect? if this is a cardinal sin, but I have not. No, their uh, album's about to drop. Highly Suspect. <laughs> but uh, no, you guys go swimming. I'm gonna get some more people in here. Matt, you can stay if you want. I don't think you're sure. done swimming. But but yeah. So thanks. Thanks for. People. Yeah. The man of the hour right here. What's up, pal? Rich Redmond, ladies and gentlemen. 
And the other man of the hour of Sunday. The hour. other hour. You're a little yeah. early. Sunday Sunday Ray Lazier, man. Yeah. Ray Lazier. He said my of, last name just about right. Did I? Yeah. Lazier? Lazier. 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 Yeah. Yeah, but no, I mean, how many versions of it have you heard? Like, oh, I get everything. I get laser, loser, you name it. I, I get it all. Yeah. Laser? Yeah, yeah laser. Well, I was listening to the I was, well, corn, by the way. You're, yeah, with I'm going to tell C, backwards people. O. That's my band, yeah. Yeah, backward, <laughs> backwards O. <laughs> I love it. Uh, so the whole, uh, I was listening to the serious takeover, and I don't think, did they ask you one question? Um, well, it's my band has a very strong personality, so it's uh, as they should with uh, 40 million records in Bakersfield. <laughs> but there's so there's so many questions to ask you. Like, you know, they've been such a tight knit group for so long. Yeah. And then you know you you came in, and so like, was it was it comfortable right away? Was it a little not at all. In fact, no? I was uh, changing my pants before each show. No, it's uh, it was. I mean, I was a session guy for many years. You know, so I. You become a chameleon. You're like, hey, my name's Ray. Hey, my name's Bob. Next thing you know, the red light's on, and you're trying to make it sound like you've been playing together forever. And through the David Lee Roth years, you know, he's you have to be on your toes. You know, have to, there's a lot of different things that happen. And so my point is, when you join a band like Korn, I just was a hired gun. I was kind of a fill-in, and I was happy with that. But Korn fans, there's no one like them on the planet. So they were like, who the heck are you? Like... It, you with know. your big PVC, was it PVC? Like I saw you out with Slipknot <laughs> and King Eight One Zero, and yeah. like it was it like PVC? Was that what your kit it's, was like? Giant. Yeah. Well, I didn't. It wasn't as big when I first was was joining, but yeah. Uh, the point is, it took me months and months because they don't. They just they don't have a lot of music theory. They don't know. They just know what they do. It comes through their fingers. It comes through their voices. So it took me months to get my groove on with that band because yeah. it just. I mean, and it, you don't just join a band like that. And when they ask right. me to be a full member in 09. They have a sound. You know they do. What I mean? and, they do. And, 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 nope. you, and you do the sound very well. well like the new album is, is awesome. It's a, it goes it. back to the, it. you know, it goes back to the roots. Appreciate it. Do you I have it, Rich? I got to get it. Oh, okay. I was going to say. No, no I got to get it. I'll give you a copy. No, I'm Half not price. Buy, I will buy it. Half price. <laughs> 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 so, Rich, what, how, are you having fun this year? Yeah. Totally having fun, man. We got a stellar lineup this year. We do. This is already the fourth annual camp. 25, 25 campers this year. I mean, we're maxed out. You know, we, we can't go above 25. I don't think you can. Can't it's do it. it's, But it's all, unless you get, you know, double the room. I just, <laughs> but yeah, then, no, I, but this, the whole idea behind this event is just it's white glove. It's all about the kids. You know, so intimate and nice, you know. You know? It's, it's a special learning experience. You guys having fun? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's the fourth yeah. annual, by the way, in Nashville. We did L.A. I First talked to Max. Day. Max was uh, Max was at the L.A. Yeah, the LA. Max, Max growing like a weed. He took a dip. I mean, it just I think like that, that was April, and he's already like two times the size he was. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, crazy. it was. It's it's been super awesome. We're going to do our, thir our second annual L.A. camp the third week of of February. Okay. And am I? Wow. So I have to hire I got to hire my teachers. Yeah. <laughs> now that show that you did live on uh Sirius, was, that was a small room, wasn't it? That was pretty intimate. Yeah, yeah, it was the Ace Hotel in LA, which yeah. is cool because it only held about 1500 and we just got off an arena tour and festival, so it was yeah, it was like a bunch of our family and friends and to be honest, I like the intimate Gigs like oh, that, bet. nothing escapes. You know yeah. what I mean? The sounds yeah. right there. And and you know. and I've listened to a lot of serious broadcasts before, like from uh, Rock on the Range and stuff. I haven't heard it. How did it, it sound? It sounds awesome. Did it? Like Rock on the Range, like it was all weird. Like See, the sound. Some was of all the mixes, the feeds. You know what I mean? They get yeah, thrown know. out there, and all of a sudden, oh, there's a kick drum. You know, it's like your mix sounds awesome. Oh, like cool. it, I was in, I was like, oh wow, they actually wow. they got us spot on. That's so good. that's Jose. Yeah. You know, Jose from Syria. Hey, make sure the corn, man. <laughs> it's corn. Like he, he's like, that guy's a passionate mofo. He, he was, he was, he, he likes you guys yeah, yeah. to say the least. Yeah. Passion, baby. <laughs> yeah, I was traveling the whole day, and it was just on all day, and I'm like, are they gonna get to the concert? Oh, because right. I was started like 7 a.m. and I'm like, yeah. are they gonna oh, get, you get to the down concert? Here? No, it was uh, last Friday, oh, I think. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It was last yeah. Friday. Yeah. No, we're so excited to have Ray, man. So, I, well, I was just going back to thank you, I mean, thanks you know, for having me. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. getting back to what you said, I remember asking uh, JC, I'm like, I go, why, why is it 25? And then, because I was a teacher at MI, you yeah. know, for many years yeah, off yeah. and on. And this is the best thing ever because it's all about the one on one. And, and people, there's nothing worse than playing for 200 people 
and a bunch of a majority walking away going, God, I wish I knew what he was doing on that one part, and I'm really puzzled about this. This is awesome. Yeah. I mean, what a better way to do something well, we like this. we just give him a broad stroke. I mean, tomorrow morning we got Lalo coming in to, to talk about Afro-Cuban hand drumming, and then, you know, my rhythm section that's been working together 18 years is coming in, and then Jimmy's going to come in and talk about, you know, health and fitness and nutrition, and Ray's going to do you know, modern big, rock drumming. Big band polkas I got yeah, on oh my, big, yeah. I, I'm going yeah. to... Next year, I'm going to bring in a Tejano drummer. It's, it's just so going down. It's so crazy, everything that goes on. And the giveaways, like you're giving away cajons, you're giving away snare drums, cymbals, well, everything. You know, there's about 50 vendors that support this event, you know, wholeheartedly, and they send stuff for the for the kids. So, really, you're going home with the, the, the face value of your ticket to get here, and then you're getting your food, your lodging, and your education basically for free. It's crazy. You know, Insane. So. I got a couple surprises I'm giving away Sunday. Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Pearl drum, Sabian yeah. He's got a whole bunch of those old ProMark sticks that he's just going <laughs> to. Wow. I remember, yeah. yeah oh, yeah. yeah. I, remember how... I broke a lot of those. <laughs> so did I. That's why I'm back. No, no. And then, well, he's you're the ProMark. You've got Maybe. the new All right. You've got the new signature stick out with the active grip. And... Yeah, it took, took uh, four years to develop, but it's really fun. It's a good, versatile, all-around drum stick. It's basically based on a 5B. It's got a forward balance. Um, it's got an abrupt taper for <coughs> us hard hitters. It's black and red, and it's got that proprietary finish on it. See you guys, um, for, for, so you can hold on to the stick. You know? it's, it's an awesome stick. I, I I play with a real heavy hitter, and he hasn't broken them yet, so I'm I'm impressed. And well, you, I've been and, through like three pairs. You play drums too. Yeah, yeah. So I, I dabble, I, you know. You do a little. You everything. You're a podcaster. You're a videographer. You're a filmmaker. I, you're a a, a, a a photographer. You manage bands. Yeah. Wow, it's great. He really does. I dabble. <laughs> I don't excel at one thing. It's like I, I'm mediocre at everything. Stop. So <laughs> whatever. It all goes together. Creativity, you know. Now going back to you, because I could just talk to you for a while. Uh, Army of Anyone. You played with them. Oh, yeah. yeah dude. What was it like yeah. playing with with Richard Patrick and then the DeLeo brothers? It's awesome. Um, I've been a huge STP fan from way back, and and there's such such some of the most beautiful songwriters. And then I, when I got to know them as humans, they're some of the most Warmest people you ever meet in your life, you know. Richard Patrick just has that that like sing scream, yeah. like it's yeah. just crazy. He was it was weird because he was a little intimidated. Uh, he thought he had to follow Wyland, you know, uh, and it was we were starting a whole new thing, you know. So yeah, that was my way out of the David Lee Roth band because I I was really getting burnt towards the end. I felt like I was in a Van Halen cover band with David Lee Roth. It was weird. Yeah. And then after a while, I was like, man, there's no creativity. I wanted to write a new. I wanted to do another Eat 'Em and Smile record. I wanted to, and he just. We kept doing the same thing. So when I met the DeLeos, that was kind of my out. I'm like, please let me audition for you. And I think we played side one and two of Physical Graffiti because they're Zeppelin fanatics. Wow. And we went into Custard Pie and we went in, you know, we've played all Zeppelin songs. And I'm like, hey, what about the, the stuff I learned, the demo stuff? And they're like, where are you from again? I go, Pittsburgh. They're like, you got the gig. Because they wanted an East Coast guy. It was kind of funny. You got the gig. Yeah, you got the gig. So That is funny. How did you get the gig in Corn? Well, like, I, that I, band. That band. Um, okay. They were managed by the firm. The firm managed Corn. So everyone knows in the business, one thing leads to another. Yes. And if you're cool to people and you show up on time and you do your job the best as you can, you, you'll most likely get referred. So yes. <clears throat> that's what happened to me. I was calling up my manager going, What's up with Corn? They got Terry Bozio playing on the record, Brooks Wackerman. They had Joey Jordis from something not filling in on the tour. What's what's up? He's like S Skrillex pressing buttons and yeah, stuff. <laughs> that yeah. yeah. And so I'm like, what's going on? He's like, he goes, they're looking for someone permanent. And and this was just one army of anyone I felt was slipping away. I knew Scott Weiland was going to get back to STP, and I'm like, man, I need a gig. And they're like, I was doing a drum clinic tour up the West Coast, and they said, hey man, you're in Oregon, they're in Seattle tomorrow. Why don't you? Go down, fly down to Seattle, and just play a couple songs. And I'm like, me? He's like, just, dude, just go down there and play. And I'm like, I had long blonde hair at the time. I have no tattoos. You know, he goes, the original drummer had a surfer haircut. And I'm like, oh, yeah, good point. So, anyway, long story short, I flew down there. Um, I learned about 33 songs best as I could. I played six very weirdly. I had this little rental DW kit. And, uh, Joey's monster kits behind me, you know. They show up like two hours late, of course. What do you know, you know? And, and I'm like, ah. so anyway, six songs. They said, you got the gig. Welcome to the band. We'll see you in Dublin. I'm That's like, awesome. Dublin. 
So it's actually on YouTube. You can watch my audition. It's like the cliff notes oh, of it oh, are on wow. there. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. You guys that is check cool. that out. Yep. What what uh what's your favorite corn song to play live? Back in Black. Love that song. No. Uh, uh, <laughs> I was like, wait. <laughs> Rich is half sleep. <laughs> Rich is like, like what? what? <laughs> back in, they, play, they play it back in what? Um, of course, I love the new stuff. I'm really proud of our new record, Serenity of Suffering, out right yes. now. Out right now. Nice. <laughs> like that eyeball? Rotting in, rotting in vain. The rotting in vain, right yeah. yeah. Well, I, you you put out like four video, three or four videos. Yeah. Like, I don't think singles are really like a thing anymore. It's weird. It's, it's like, like whatever it's, hits. It is what know? it is. I mean, it's like, yeah. you know, we got eight and a half million hits already on the first video and it's like uh, is that cool i don't know i guess so it's like it's getting out there people are seeing it and um the shows are selling out which is to me the most important thing people aren't yes. buying rock records like they used to and I've, I've never accepted it a lot of people in my business have but to me it's like you know it's on sale at best buy for 9.99 to me it's like we worked a year and a half on this fork out a ten dollar bill that's just yes. my perception oh, I know. because it's... but People are coming to the concerts. They're buying shirts. They're buying my sticks. Yeah. So hey, uh, uh, you know, I'm not complaining. I'm, I'm I'm blessed to be still doing this. Absolutely. You know, it's, you know, I'm 73 it's a- now, and I mean, I feel <laughs> 65. I just feel seven. Which leads into my next question: How was Vietnam? <laughs> my sh- my bones. Yeah. yeah. How was Vietnam? That was good. Agent Orange. That was good, dude. Yeah. Agent was- Orange. Wow. Yeah. So. So everybody got by the new record. Yes. Buy three copies. Give them to your friends. <laughs> I'm kidding. Do you? Yeah. Hell yeah. We got Joe with us. Joe and Sarah. Oh yeah, I'm having a Joe and Sarah. Party. Both yeah. alumni. Mugen Music Group down there. He gives he gives the hookup. He does. You got video going too? Yeah. Hey, I was gonna say I've been doing this the whole time. Like. Yeah, like I should have been just like. Oh no. <laughs> playing it up. Yeah, yeah. But no, a lot of people say, like, music people, they're like, oh, we'll give you the hookup and stuff. But Joe comes through. Joe, well, I mean, you guys have cool sponsors Joe's and stuff, and, work. you know. That's where I got your sticks. Really? <laughs> I don't care what Bob Rupp says about you, dude. What do you say? I'm just kidding. Me and Bob go back. I know you do. Back. That's why I was winding you up. I think the first time I met you, you was like, Oh man, he's like, you know Bob Ruff? He's like, this guy knows everyone in China. You can go down there. He's like, yeah, I know Bob Ruff. <laughs> I'll be in Zimbabwe somewhere playing. Hey man, it'll be Bob Ruff texting me. Hey, can you put this guy plus two in your life? In Zimbabwe? Uh, no, I'm just I'm Mozambique. Yeah. <laughs> Do you wow. guys have to switch up your style when you play in Zimbabwe? Little. No, no we just no because you, you can't. They're, they're uh, you know. They know the music. hardcore core yeah. corn fans. The second that ride hits on blind, they're like, yeah. 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 <laughs> wow. But you never answered my question. What's what? your favorite corn song other than the new oh, stuff to play um, on live? Other than the new stuff. Um, the last record that I'm on, no. Uh, obviously, Blind's a Rush. I mean, that song, I mean, I remember I was teaching at MI. I was teaching there. And it was a, a, a class called Heavy Metal Live Playing Workshop. Wow. So these kids had to learn two cover songs. And perform them because a lot of these kids have never played on a mic stage with lights in your face and yes. monitors. They don't know what that, you know. So my job, the, the, the staff's job was um, pick two songs and have them learn them. No charts, memorization only. Get up there, go for it like you're performing. Wow. One of the first couple of weeks, I remember, um, okay, I'm going to pick this week. You pick that week. Well, the female instructor picked Nirvana, Smells Like Teen Spirit, and Corn Blind. And I'm like... What a stupid name. Corn, really? That corn. The name of the band's that. Oh, you have to hear this. You're going to freak out. I'm like, put it on. I hear the ride symbol. I'm like, oh. And then Jonathan says, are you ready? It kicks in. And I just remember going, like, this is, <laughs> this don't sound like anything out there. Because at that time, yeah. you know, Nirvana and Soundgarden and STP, Alice in Chains, all these Seattle bands were, and they all had their thing, but they kind of sounded similar. Yeah. Corn said no. We're from Bakersfield, you know, we're gonna sound like this. Yes. Anyway, it took me a long time because um, to really grasp a hold of what was going on. But so that song, of course, is is one of my favorites. And uh, um, yeah, it's fun. We're opening up a song called "Right Now" on this past tour. Oh, yeah. And um, that was from I forget the name of the album. The thread. Well, um, t- take a look in the mirror. Yes. Take yeah. A look. That was after. And then we we played a song called "Good issues. God" on this past tour, which I smacked my uh, straight in the eyeball. Three songs from the end. I don't know if you can see that bruise. Yeah. 
Um, I always, you know, when I'm tired, I'm just, you've done it, Rich. I'm sure you've socked yourself somewhere. You're like Smack. your nose. You're somewhere, like, oh, okay. right. So it's the end of the tour, four weeks in. I'm ready. I'm already in my bed in Franklin sleeping, you know, in my head, you know. Yes. But I'm getting through the show, and I, I was playing some weird stuff. I look at my tech. He's like, what are you doing? Like, I was playing kind of weird as it was. We're playing Good God, which is a pretty vigorous drum song. I, tur- I hit my gong drum, which is over here. I turn back around, and on the upstroke, full force, this tip of the stick in my eyeball. Yeah. It's amazing. You get it just punctured. Dude, I thought my eyeball was going to be laying on my <laughs> snare drum because I hit it that hard. And I, was, I just remember going like, I was stunned that I, I was playing left-handed, and I was like trying to feel... And I felt wetness, which I thought was blood. My tech comes up and said, it's just, it's watering a lot. What'd you do? I'm like, I hit myself full blown in an eyeball. Anyway, I finished the show. When I got home, went to the eye doctor and they did all kinds of tests. Thank God I can see. You know, I lost a little bit of my peripheral on my left side, but yeah. Wow. Is that permanent or is that just temporary? Wear wear goggles, kids. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Drum goggles. Rich Redmond's drum Uh, goggles. Wow. Very. Yeah. (laughs) Rich is like, I don't know if I want this guy doing this thing on Sunday now. That's, no. well, that's, a, that's a painful story, man. Yeah, dude, it, it was no joke. And I really thought that, like, the first thing I thought, I was like, well, I'm 46. I've, I've, I've had perfect vision my whole life. It's okay. You know, and our, our head of security has one glass eye. He, he, he's fine. Yeah. I, I swear, and while I'm playing the songs, like, I'm like, I'm going to be blind in one eye. Like, I, you know. Yeah, Sammy Davis. Right. <laughs> Dumb, Last eye. stupid thing, stupidest thing I've ever done. Last but it eye. happened, you know. Well, no, you're just, in, you're, we're in the moment. Yeah, you're, yeah. We're athletes, man. Yeah. Really, in, the, yep. in, the, in that moment. Well, thank you two so much for talking to me. Oh, thank you. And I lo- I'm looking it? forward to your clinic oh, on thanks. Sunday. I can't wait. It'll be fun. It'll be, be fun. Do David Lee Roth Yeah, let me tell you something. I'm going to talk like this the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> what was that famous, what was that thing he said? What did he say? <laughs> Rich, you believe in love at first sight? Need me to walk by you again? <laughs> what was that thing you said oh, about Starbucks. Starbucks? Oh yeah, yeah. The first time I was in the studio with Dave, no click track. You know, it was me and John Five just playing. We barely knew the tunes. He wanted that old Van Halen sa- sound feel, yeah, feel. And I didn't know the song, so you're, I'm really trying to control the time. tempo and time. Yeah. And, and it, first thing in the talk back, you know, he's smoking a cigarette and he's like, hits the talk back, goes, he goes. Someone take the Starbucks. <laughs> I blew it, Rich. Uh, Someone take the bongo player to Starbucks. He's dragging. <laughs> <laughs> the bongo player. Yeah. I yeah. love it. So be That's careful. Good one. Yeah. Wow, guys. <laughs> That's great. Do you guys want to chime in with some some quips? Some quippiness? Yeah. So Sarah. Quip it up. <laughs> Sarah from Connecticut. Yes. And Rich is from Connecticut so too, but go yes, 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 yes. Yeah, bring nice you. chatting. See you Sunday. See Sunday. Sunday. Slide on over. Sarah, Sarah. What up, Brady? What's up? Who else? We got someone else. No, Jimmy. What up, podcast? Jimmy, come over here. Come okay, on, Jimmy. Jimmy. <laughs> Craig. Yeah, get Craig in here. Okay. Let's go. So Sarah, yes. you. We're here last year. Yes. Yes. How? What's What's changed? You're a little bit older, a little bit wiser. What's really changed in this camp? Well, from last year to this year, um, new clinicians, obviously. Um, different, like, I, there's so much that's going on. It's got the same feel as last year, just the clinicians. Yeah. Different. Oh, yeah. It's different. It's but it, that's, but different, like. Scheduling and whatnot, but the clinicians are great. The camp's awesome. I love it. Nothing. I, this is the best camp anybody could go to. Any drummer. And uh, just to give you a little plug, you're doing the Hit Like a Girl contest, right? Yes, I am doing the Hit Like a Girl competition in February. I'm going to be going into the studio, doing some videos. Hopefully someone cool will be doing your videos. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't who, know. I, I, I don't know, know who could do that. I, I know a guy, too. And uh, if I if I may chime in really quick, uh, kind of kind of similar to how Sarah was describing this uh, this weekend, um, and Rich told told this in an interview that he did with uh, with Miguel Monroy uh, for a Louisville drummer at the time, who's now with Modern Drummer. Uh, he said that uh, like with a lot of clinics that he has attended or has reviewed, that a lot of times the clinician will do like and quoting here do like a 90 minute drum solo like take two two questions and then out the back door and it's kind of like one of those events where like wah, 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 or you know it's kind of like oh 
I want to know this guy, but I can't ask him any questions, and he's out the door already. But with this weekend, it's um, it's put together in such a way where you do get somewhat of that uh, solo technical kind of feel there, but they actually talk to you yes. and thoroughly um, explain what they're doing, and they also demonstrate so you can actually see what they're talking about. So it's not like, okay, well, I... We heard we heard this lesson of what they're talking about, but, but how is it applied? Right. Where, whereas, with every single clinician that comes here, and and this is not just exclusively to Rich Remen. This is for every clinic that has e that has ever done it throughout its four-year history. Is that they are very engaged with the audience. They make the they make. I think it's so intimate. It just makes everything. Yeah, it, yeah exactly. Yeah. It just makes everything. It, you know, it's such an inspiring weekend. It's not. It's not a downer kind of thing. It, and you're not just coming. It's not like going to a concert. You pay for a ticket. You go to a concert. You see the concert. You leave the concert. Maybe you listen to the record. Maybe you don't. You know, it's more so like you're making connections. Not That's only right. are you making exactly. friends with the campers, but you're making friends with sponsors. MugaMusicGroup.com. Or check them out. Or. Uh, you know, you're you're and and you're making friends with the clinicians too, because they're getting. Rich puts them on the spot, makes them feel awkward. You know, to give the emails or, or the contact information. Um, that, that's part of what makes that. this whole and thing fun. It's not just a. You know what I mean? It's not just pay and go home and don't think about it again. It's like an experience, networking. Right. It's everything. This camp literally changes your life like it's the best week this was the best weekend of my life being able to work with these types of drummers these like celebrity drummers like so intimately and you get to like it's like an open book you can ask them anything in 10 years you got to do my podcast again when you're a celebrity drummer and absolutely like, and uh it's in recording yeah. now yeah, she, you hold me she'll definitely now. be a celebrity for All right, sure matt if you could go if we could go to craig here absolutely Okay. Hello. Introduce yourself. Hey, I'm Craig McRae. I'm from the Seattle area of Washington, up in the Northwest. Right. You're a you're a Northwest gentleman, and you don't have an important job or anything, do you? <laughs> He's got a cool Which job. Which my regular day job or my side job? The 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 side job, the side I believe. Job, yeah. So I'm the uh, assistant director for the Seattle Seahawks Blue Thunder Drumline. Go Hawks! And uh, yeah, I've been I've been a part of the Drumline for 12 years now. That's awesome, and and Super Bowls have happened. I've been to three then. Super Bowls, so yeah. yeah, it's been it's been an awesome, awesome. What experience. was your experience out of your th the three Super Bowls you've been to? Oh, just tell us a little bit about it. Well, um, the first Super Bowl against Pittsburgh was was really interesting because, um, of course, Seattle had never been to a Super Bowl before. Right. And um, getting to play, um, one of the things that we we decided to do was play for the school for the deaf in Detroit. And a lot of people think that's weird, like the drummers, how are you going to play for a school for the deaf? Kids can't hear you, yeah. but they hear vibrations. They can feel the vibrations. And we're in a, this small like gym, gymnasium, and we had 33 drummers in there. And it start, the first song we started with like this kind of snare thing going on. And the kids are kind of like looking, they're checking us out. And when the bass drums kicked in, man, their, their eyes wide, their mouths dropped open. And it was just one of the most um, incredible experiences that you can even have. I bet because imagine, imagine not being able to hear, and then yeah. you feel something like that. You know, what I mean? it would be a completely yeah. like. It was just, incredible. So we every, take that for granted, you know. Yeah, and every Super Bowl after that, we went to um, New York. We played for the New York School for the Deaf, and we played for the uh, Phoenix, Arizona School for the Deaf. So everywhere we've gone, that's kind of been our tradition to do. So, um, but it's been really, really cool experience. So, what brings you out to uh, Nashville? Um, I um, was pretty much self-taught. I've been playing for over 30 years, and never had drum lessons. Um, really started getting into country music probably only about two or three years ago. And um, love Jason Aldean. R Jason Aldean was coming to town, and Rich was giving drum lessons. Speak of Rich. Here. And massages. And love massages. You love you guys. See you right See now for coffee. See you tomorrow, Rich. All right. Have a good night, Rich. So uh, I took a drum lesson with him and um, had a, just a fantastic time. Um, he talked about his, his crash concept and just really got me inspired to, to really, you know, put a little bit more time into my craft and, and play. And when I saw 
the camp last year, the pictures and all that from last year. I was like, I've got to go. And I saw the LA one come up, and I, I there was um, Thomas Lang and and Nate Morton. I wanted to go meet those guys, but it was just the timing just didn't work out. So, but no, I think Lang didn't do LA. It did was Lang did, oh, did, 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 Lang did okay. here last year. He did here last but yeah, year. it was Nate Morton, Kenny Arnoff, like, right. and, and yeah, so I yeah. wanted to get down to LA, but that wasn't working out, and so I knew I had to come to Nashville. So. So, well, welcome. Well, thank you very much. All right, so who else do we got? Any? We got, we got Chuck, and you got Andre. Here, let me. We're going to get. Oh, yeah, he's talking. Oh, yeah, we got. Hold on. Let's get, let's get Jimmy in here. All right. So I'm going to have Thanks, Brady. Thank you, Craig. Jimmy Elcock. Senor. I don't think. Were you on the. I don't think you were no, on last I year's. Here. I think I had a gig uh, somewhere. I had a gig somewhere last year, so I could not make this. I saw the pictures, but. I was not a guest. Yes. Well, welcome this year. I'm honored, though. You're part of Scorpio Marketing and, and the whole thing. You also play for Zoe 101. and uh, <laughs> I do. I play Jamie for Lynn Zoe. Spears, everybody. But uh, <laughs> uh, it, it was funny because I was you posted a, a video on Instagram of like Jamie trying to break into her old house. And then she posted a video, I think, somewhere. That must have been fun. Oh, yeah. Trying to break in. It, it's, it looks like you guys have fun. We have a lot of fun. Uh, you know, I like to tell people, everyone I've played with so far in Nashville, I'm, or, you know, I'm lucky to have these gigs that are families to me. You know, I think a lot of times certain gigs you might feel very much like you're a side man. Not that that's bad, um, but I've been fortunate with uh, the gigs I've had, especially people like uh, Jamie Lynn and Logan Mize that I feel very much like. Yes, you also play with Logan member. Mize and... Definitely. Uh, um, awesome as well. Another amazing artist. Um, but speaking of that, fun stories. With being a family comes lots of debauchery and uh, <laughs> pranks and crazy situations and, you know, gut-wrenching laughs. What's the, what's the craziest, what's the craziest uh, prank that's ever gone down? Oh. Um, the first thing that comes to mind, let's not call it a prank, but we, with Logan, we decided... You know, all these different bands had their things. Like we, like Chase Rice's crew, they all had these hats. Like they all had their hats, and like different bands had their different things. So we decided, well, we're gonna one up everybody, and we're gonna be super bad to the bone, and we're gonna bring out, um, we're gonna forget gear and just bring out as many scooters as we can on the road. <laughs> and when I say scooters, I mean like little mopeds. And so I had a Honda Ruckus. Other guys had little like weed whacker bikes another guy had a miniature like chopper like monkey bars hanging up version of the chopper but it was like a little 50 cc <laughs> chopper and so we called ourselves we were like the scooter gang <laughs> betty's kids you can think about that and uh, we called ourselves betty's kids and we just like would drive through all these festivals and like chris our guitar player was clipping people at the heels and we would go ride through campsites trying to find like as much trouble as we could get into and so that's you know funny. that's, that's the what rock made star some life waves. right there the so rock star life you can just you know, Beautiful. come to your own conclusions. And uh, and you're doing a clinic t tomorrow, is it? Yes. Is it tomorrow? <coughs> and you sounded fully prepared earlier, so I'm kind of excited to <laughs> to we'll see, see how that we'll goes. See. But no, you're talking about health and fitness, and 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 you may be embarrassed by it because I saw an older picture go up of you on oh, Facebook, yeah, and I think you untagged yourself from it. Ooh, I don't I know. <laughs> There's probably but some. The, it's branding, guys. It's but, branding. But you you have lost a lot of weight I have. over and. Um, and I'm trying to do that. So, yeah, and you get, I saw that picture and I'm like, Jimmy? <laughs> like, hey, man. It's, Jimmy? It's blood, sweat, and tears. No, but in all sincerity, um, so I played sports and stuff like that. I was a three sport athlete, all that stuff in, in uh, high school and um, when I was a freshman and I guess spring of my freshman year in college. I was in New Orleans and I was actually uh, my first Mardi Gras. I wasn't even a real Mardi Gras yet, <coughs> but it was family Gras, just this nice family Mardi Gras out in Metairie, Louisiana, and uh, there were a bunch of awesome concerts, and I w went with church friends, and we went, and uh, we were leaving, and a drunk driver in his uh, jacked-up 150 hit us in our little old Toyota Camry and hit directly on my door, and I broke all my ribs, oh, wow. flipped the car, and was this awful wreck, and I didn't like the feeling of uh, a bunch of meds and all this stuff like that, so I kind of went out for a while, and I just basically... I was immobile. I couldn't work out. I couldn't laugh. I couldn't climb in the truck. I mean, it was like really terrible. And I just sort of, that starting my college career between all the great New Orleans food and all the life New Orleans likes to live, 
you know, it just started adding up, adding up, adding up. And um, finally, when I finished college and I moved here, same thing. I had a ton of fun. I was getting these great gigs, but we were definitely having um, a lot of fun mixed with just, you know, you're starting out. So the travel's really tough, not a lot of sleep. You know, you're not getting uh, beautiful catering. And so it just kept adding on, adding on. And I said, after a while, and I'll talk about it tomorrow, but I said, after a while, I was like, you know what? I'm at a fork in the road in my own life. And I thought about 10, 15, 20, whatever years from now. And I said, I can either continue this career and this passion and end up on this side of the fence doing it this way. And it's fine, but I might not feel great. Maybe I'll lack some confidence in those areas. I don't want to feel like that. I want to, you know, I want to feel confident when I go out there in any way. My public image, as vain as that sounds, or you just want to no, be no, as no, confident no. and have your best foot forward Absolutely. and feel healthy. Or I could go the other route and just, you know, everything might be kind of feel sepia tone for the rest of my life, and I might not like that very much. So I just took it upon myself, like anything, whether it's drums or fitness or, or whatever you're passionate about, you kind of won't do it. You won't achieve anything or get there unless you want it so bad that there's no way you're not going to have it. And it was the same thing. I said, okay, I'm going to continue everything with drums, but I'm going to do it this way. So have you, gotten, have you gotten into like chiropractic care or anything like that? Have you, have you um, done any of that? So one of the things I enjoy, <laughs> I have never been to a chiropractor. I need to. I rodeoed loosely when I was growing up, which is a weird story, and I box and do some jujitsu now, and my body We got to roll, wrecked. dude. We, we got to do it. We gotta should. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> Forget my clinic. Let's just let's do that do tomorrow. I'm down, dude. <laughs> I'm down. Gracie Barr, <laughs> man. Let's do it. Yeah. Um, I did Muay Thai at a Gracie gym hey, yeah. in Houston. Awesome, that's, man. Uh, dude, Gosh, that's, well, you school me. Let's do it, man. Greg's a black belt, too. My body feels like a wreck <laughs> sometimes, so I need to... But it's great cardio, though. More like, it. even yeah. if you're not trying to get any belts in yeah. jiu-jitsu, it's great oh, cardio. Oh, oh, jiu yeah, full, yeah, body yeah. full body, yeah, it's great stuff. But I need to know more about chiropractic care. I've never... Yeah. I think right. John Braswell... Or, or I, yeah. I right, I'm I'm doing that now. I'm in the I'm in the chiropractic care That's because a, you know I, I suffer from like asthma and allergies, okay. and like the the solution is always more meds, more meds. But right. it's like that's not a solution, right? Your and body can really do a lot, right? It can. Yeah. yeah. So that's cool, why I man. asked that because it's super. Yeah. No, I love important. school me. Yeah, that'd be yeah. awesome. Yeah, there's we'll some talk. great clinics in Nashville for that, like chiropractic clinics. We'll talk. We'll do it, and yeah, then we'll man. roll and crank our we'll necks, roll. and then <laughs> we'll go back to the chiropractor. Yes. Sounds great. It'll be gold. Like Wrench. <laughs> Better than coffee. He's staring at me. <laughs> Who's behind me? Mukin's being all creepy behind me. Like, he's like breathing heavy on my neck and stuff. I was, I was waiting for my interview. Drummer's Guide to Gear. <laughs> you, did the, you did the Drummer's Guide to Gear takeover. I know. I, I, you know what? We need, someone should take a picture of us doing this so we can add it to, yeah. the, to the thing. Because I'm technically not done my takeover. Is that weird that we're doing that on a podcast? No, <laughs> not at all. Check hey it out, Jimmy. Uh, D2. Or Joe. What, what is the Instagram? D2. Drummer's G Guide to Gear. It's at official DG2G. Wait, who's, whose is that? I know. I totally know what that is. Chris Kerr? Yeah. It's yeah. a great. Uh, Are you doing a So I did a takeover? a takeover all day today. Yeah. Oh, so, you so did? So go check out the Instagram. No it's, way, it dude. It should be all over it today. That's crazy. Chris, I'm trying my best, man. I'm trying to post as much as I can. Chris, we miss you. Chris was on last we year's Chris. podcast. That's yes. cool. We got Definitely. Joey Aussie here. Brady? Nothing. Well, you need a mic. Someone here. needs to give you. A, Take the mic. There Thanks, we go. Richie. We got Joey. You were at the LA camp. I was. What brings you to Nashville now? Uh, this group right here. LA was an awesome experience. It was my first camp, and I just heard all these great stories about Nashville. And talking with you, Rich, I knew it's it was all right, be, right? <laughs> it's not bad. It's not bad. I mean, there's a Jimmy guy here, and he, he's okay. Sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> and it's been it's been a totally different and complimentary experience to LA. It's it's been incredible, and and following guys like Richie and Jimmy and, and such on Instagram and watching them play and practice, it it gives you a whole new inspiration to come down here and really bring your A game, and then sit next to guys like Greg that just stick handle like the, the best of them. It's just awesome. So it it's been an incredible experience. I'm thrilled to be here. I'm just happy. We're glad so you're here, man. Do you, you, do you still Definitely. practice? I'm sure you still practice, right? I still or practice, do you not as much as this guy. Nah, um, he, he sets the bar super high for no, all man. of us. Seriously, man. Yep, I he do. Kills it. I do still practice. I'd say yeah. most of my practice, honestly, is probably on pads in my condo. I, a great thing that I did was I was able to 
I was able to buy my own place um, a couple years ago now, which was awesome. That uh, is awesome. The pros and cons to everything. The negative is it's a condo, a little square hundred, you know, 700 square foot condo. But it's yours, man. It's mine. I love it. I love it. And to you can death. see the Taser Batman building. You right? can. You can. <laughs> The Eye of Sauron. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I think of. Yes. Everyone says Batman, but that's what I Dude, think of. Genius. That's all I see. But uh, I can't. I can't play a, re- oh, you know, a kit in there. So I have a storage unit. I can set up a kit, but it's, you know, yeah, man. I have to. I have to. I've been going nuts for the last like, year. I, I, I can't because the more I live, I can't yeah. play because of my neighbors. So I have to. Make and it's really hard. And it sounds. It's going to sound really pathetic. And I'll. But I'll be totally transparent and admit it. It sounds really pathetic. But on a day that I am in town, and say, you know, if I I've been lucky to be really busy, and if I am in town a couple of days, some days to like feel like okay, I'm going to get up and then drive 25 minutes to the storage unit and then like run the electrical cord down the hall and like no HVAC and then I'm going to play for a bunch of hours and like figure out how to get a light on in there and then like by the time that ordeal sometimes you're like man yeah <laughs> you know I'm going to catch up with a friend or something like yeah. that so I practice but not as much as I would like to or should I totally feel you there uh, with the whole pad stuff you know because I don't have the kit set up anywhere convenient I mean, I, I have a pad set up. I usually go to Barista yeah, yeah. and set up a Barista cool. and just chill there for like two hours Heck and yeah. have coffee and play on a pad. Because, I mean, it does suck. Like, I did the storage room thing, and you, you waste 30 minutes setting up, and like, right. then it's just like this ordeal. But there's so many cool things that can be done on a pad. Totally. We got we to gotta get coffee and yeah, do the man. pad work stuff. Yeah, man. You can teach me a thing or two. Oh, whatever. Dude. Absolutely. It'll be great, though, for real. No, I'm serious. And, and it's a great way to, like, connect with people. Like, this is how I'm doing my lessons now. Right. All pad work stuff. I mean, I do drum set stuff, of course, too. But, like, being face-to-face after a cup of coffee, playing some stuff on a pad, it's just a better experience, you know? Yeah. Like, no one wants to pay lessons for a lick that you can get off of YouTube. Right. You want to pay for an experience. Mm-hmm. And so it's a better way of growing. Totally, man. So it's something I really enjoy. Maybe it's something that you would enjoy, yeah. too. Yeah. Wait, you and guys don't pay for the lessons on YouTube? I just, <laughs> Wait, I, what? I just send people wow. money through PayPal. Wow. <laughs> no? What's YouTube? <laughs> what's what? What's you YouTube? Over you. <laughs> Let's get Miguel. Miguel, come over and, and, and chat with me. Let's Thank you, Jimmy. <laughs> There we go. That was some skill. That just went down, man. That was that just happened. That was when modern drummer enters. Str- that's how we do it. Straight from the deck. That's, that's what right. that was. When we roll, we roll in style. <laughs> so Miguel, hi. Hello. How are you? Wonderful. I figured I'd bring you over here to give you a little exposure to my. 96 subscribers. I thought you felt sorry for me because I was in oh. the corner of the room. You're like, look at that guy by himself. He's well, lonely. yeah. I mean, I feel I. I just want. I just wanted you to plug your your startup magazine. Yeah. Well, um, you know, it's a little startup magazine, like you said. We're uh, based out of New Jersey. It's called Modern Drummer Magazine. Okay. It's a uh, modern drummer. Modern drummer. Yeah. And so, you know, um, it's only been around for right now just like about 40 years. So, you know, like I said, it's just kind of a up and coming thing, right? In its infancy. Yeah, it's really still in its infancy. We we yeah. l- really like to see it continue forward for like maybe another 120 to 270 years, perhaps. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I can't even keep a straight face anymore. But no, how? Okay, so so modern drummer, um, like the biggest drum magazine, obviously, you know, in the uh, world, right? <laughs> Now, how is that? How has it changed over the, the over the past few years with the internet like rise and kind of like print media? Do you know, yeah. you know, one of the biggest things we've seen recently is obviously people are wanting to experience content more than just read it. Yes. And so, um, well, the, well, everyone's attention spans like a goldfish right. now. So. <laughs> <laughs> like people tuned out of this, you know, 54 minutes ago. I for, what was the question? <laughs> Hi, I'm Tom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I mean, like, people are really wanting to experience content. And one of the unique things that Modern Drummer has is we have access to artists, to people, and to places that a lot of other people don't have, even other competing magazines. And so what we try and do is pull back the curtain and give people access to some of that world behind the scenes. And so whether it's, you know, spending some exclusive time with Carter Beaufort from Dave Matthews Band or watching how drums are constructed, 
or I you think know, you dropped something. Right. Yeah. <laughs> or you know, <laughs> or um, doing product reviews and stuff like that. I mean, when I first came on to Modern Drummer, um, we didn't have a YouTube channel yet, and so that was one of the first things that I helped to bring and make a part of our magazine. Was and that's great because you got to keep you got to keep up with it. You know what I mean? You got more now more than ever. You have to keep up with that technology curve. Absolutely. Hence why. I'd do a two-bit podcast, you yep. know? I just <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right, man. So the video f component is one of the changes we've seen over time. But another thing is people are wanting to experience even the written content differently. You know, right. it's a digital age. So we're trying to make it as seamless and responsive and, a and as accessible as possible. That's great. It seems to be working just fine. You know, yeah. just fine for you. Absolutely. There's some cool stuff in the future. We're excited about it. For sure. I'm excited as well. well cool. I'm, uh, I'm excited that you're excited. I've been a subscriber since Vietnam, actually. <laughs> I awesome. used to have them send it over there. That's, that's, it's like you came out of the womb subscribing. Yeah, that's I did. Incredible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Yep. Yeah, well, they kept sending me all those cards, you know, the subscription right. cards that fall all over the floor and yeah. stuff. I was like, do you still put those in there? Yeah, we do, man. Because they fall on the floor and then you pick it up and you're like, whoa, this is a I great should probably subscribe there. to this. Yeah. You should all subscribe to Modern Drummer and my YouTube oh, channel. There's a video going. I forgot about that. Yeah, there is. ¿Qué pasa? ¿Cómo estás, mis amigos? I don't know. I'm getting tired, and we we need to get more people in here, I think. I guess I'm done. So, yeah, well, you know what? Drop the mic. Thank you so much for, for coming on. I look forward to spooning with you tonight. Good times will be had. As long as I'm Little Spoon, I'm cool. JC, get over here. We got to, well, I mean, I don't have, like, a lot of time. Oh, but of course. Of course. Gents, I got to run. But I love you all, and I'll see you in the morning. For sure. Well, come here and say, come here, come here, Mike Wrench. You probably have to, yeah, b bend down for a second, because you're giant. Mike, Mike Wrench. What's up, guys? How is everybody doing? You doing good? You've already been on, like, four yeah, of these podcasts. Yeah, I, I don't need to be here. Rebel. Yeah, I don't need to be here right now. Okay. I'm just saying hello. All right, yeah. Love you guys. Have fun. Okay, bye. Bye. Yep, yeah, overstayed your welcome already. already yep, wow. bye. Have fun. <laughs> MikeRench.com. <laughs> you come here. Yes, come here. You're you're like, oh, get me on the video. Get me on the video. Red Dragon. Red Dragon. Oh, JC's oh, out God, already? You really? JC, you're out already? Oh my okay. goodness, what's up guys? What are y'all talking about? How's it going? Hey man, how are you? Grind it out. Yes. Grind wow, it out. I didn't know you were going there, but that's cool. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Got a, <laughs> got a clothing got a clothing line yes. company? What is it? Well, Grind It Out Clothing was established almost about four four or five years ago now. Started in the poker world. When you play cards, you sit at the poker table for hours and hours and hours. It's called grinding it out. It's kind of a poke started out to be kind of like a poker apparel t shirt thing, just for fun. And then it slowly morphed into this lifestyle brand. So now it's you know in Route 21 nationwide. We're in a few boutiques around town here in Nashville, also in Los Angeles. Um, and now we're thinking more activewear, like an Under Armour type thing. Okay, yeah. So it's a lot grind, of things on the horizon. Dude, grinding out could be sports. Get on your poker, grind. Music, everything. So slowly evolving. I'm just saying what's on your shirts. I'm just you know. <laughs> I like the one with the arrow. Yeah, that was maybe a misfire. To your knees. But we sold some and <laughs> <laughs> so uh, <he's> sorry. <laughs> that was for Mike. Anyway, let's hear you, let's hear your best Christopher Walken impression. Ma, I don't know. That was from a. <laughs> that was not my impression. That's an impression from The Big Bang Theory. Wow. Wow. <laughs> uh, wait, the one from Wayne's World. He's like, you want me to say what? Like, I don't get it. Remember that from Wayne's World too? I do. I yeah. do. Uh, so I hear you do a good Thomas Lang. Oh Lord, dude! That's what Rich I don't know told him me. that well to do this impression. <laughs> He's gonna see me be like, I don't know who that is. He's fired. We need to hear it now. Okay, the impression again is from somebody else's impression on that DW video <laughs> of the Drumminator. So it's like, do it now, which is but that's Arnold Schwarzenegger. So I don't Drumminator. A anyone from Thomas Lang's gonna beat me up. I don't even know Austria. Him. Anyone yes. from Austria? It's just right. <laughs> No, this is Mike Wrench's <laughs> flamacue with my feet. That's that's his deal. That's not mine. <laughs> Sorry. All right. I've created enough damage here. All right. Well, you guys so. go get drunk. And okay. No. Thanks for bringing John Wasaki by. I John appreciate Wasaki? it. Oh, that's right. No, I mean to the podcast. Thanks a lot for that. Oh. <laughs> All 
appreciate well, I that. asked him to be here, and you know, it's too important. Yeah, it's guess. been a while, anyway. Later. All right, you owe me some money though now. So, all right. All right. Red Dragon, everybody. All right. Yes. Got Chuck over here. Chuck, where are you from? Hello. I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Hey, I'm from near you. In you are from near me. There's a lot of Pennsylvania people here. Yeah, that's super cool. <laughs> Joe just keeps. <laughs> He's making his rounds. I love it. I am. <laughs> so yeah, what brings you out? Um, started playing drums yesterday. Nah, I. Uh, <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I think all of us do. Yeah, it's come down here for my first lesson ever. That's what it sounds ever. like anyway. Just kidding. No, I saw, uh, last year I saw this and I wanted to do it, but I didn't really commit to it. So what you're saying is the podcast specifically yes, brought yes. you. Yes, I was, I was checking out Bray's podcast and I was like, I was going through the internet and I searched something. I think Rich It just came up under, I think the fifth page I looked at on Google when I typed in <laughs> Walmart, and then it showed up somewhere down there. And uh, yeah. I was like, I'm going to listen to this podcast. And then I pulled it up, and Rich Redman was talking. And I was like, I guess I better go down there and, and talk with Brady for a little bit and Absolutely. see what he has to say. Well, I'm glad that you I only came, came down for you. I didn't come down for everything else. Well, that's a lot of people. Only yeah, I just wanted me, you to so. take pictures of me all weekend. That's all. Yeah, I'm doing yeah. <laughs> I mean, we do have a photo shoot to do. We and, do. And I'm thinking, like, maybe this table after I this I heard you podcast, like Little Spoon. I love Little Spoon. <laughs> Being Little Spoon. <laughs> so, Joe, have I really talked to you yet? No, you haven't. He's just waiting. <laughs> I've said Mugen Music 8,000 times. Speak to me. You speak to me. What's up, brother? Um, this is my brother from another mother yo, from Detroit. I look alike in a weird, like uh, the glasses. Yeah, you do. You guys could be brothers, actually. We have, we have we're eerily alike in a lot of or ways. Or like distant cousins. Something in there. Yeah. You guys yeah. are related. You better look into that. <laughs> I'm a mud. I'm a mix of everything. So I think like everybody else. Maybe I am too. I don't know. You never know. You never know. Go Tigers. <laughs> so what's up? What are your sponsor this year again? Mugen Music Group, as I've said 8,000 times already, so I don't understand why you don't think anyone knows who you are. No, it's, it's all good. I just came out here just to uh, kind of say hi and meet a bunch of people I know and people I don't know. And kind of yeah. just kind of chill in the cut and, you know, have some fun, good vibes and be here in Nashville, you know, it's, it's something different. I mean, you think about it, this is like a growing city and I mean, look at everybody here, almost from everywhere except for Pennsylvania, but <laughs> it's kind of close. Yeah, Pennsylvania, yeah, Pennsylvania, 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 because Greg's in the house, but he's been on some podcasts and stuff. He, he likes to just sit there. I just kind of lift right out of this one, don't I? Yeah. You're the odd man. Why, you're from Chicago, right? Why 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 don't you have the the Chicago like the <laughs> Let's go to a Cubs game. We're on a mission from God. Why don't you have that home? <laughs> yeah, well, for the for the record, that's for sure not true to Cubs. Um, I tried to not do my best Chicago impression around people because they just get severely annoyed. It doesn't annoy me very much, you know. Is that a Chicago accent? It's more Sarah Palin, I think. Okay. <laughs> As I'm doing it, I'm like, I'm really more, hi, Russia. Like, yeah. You started like Chris Farley a little bit, and then we went into Sarah Palin. It's pretty, pretty sweet. I'm terrible with impressions. Like, this is my impression of myself. You know, it's just, yeah, uh-oh. Who's your best one, Joe? Um, family Guy. What, what character from Family Guy? Uh, there's a few of them. Uh, I don't know. Let's I'm ready. See. I'm shy, but uh, let, me, let, me try. Yeah, let me try. Let me try. Um, hey, uh, you know, uh, why are we here at the drummer's camp? You know, uh, this is Joey here and uh, Brady, and this guy with the long hair, and the guy with the big beard. You know, uh, yeah. Is, is, who, 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 who am I? 
I'm going to be honest, I don't even know. I don't <laughs> either. That <laughs> that I couldn't pick that up. South Park? I don't yeah, even think that was Family Guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, like I said, I'm shy, so let me, let me get into my character. Yeah, break into the character a little bit. I, I, I sense this through. I got you. Or I could be creepy. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you have to try for that. <laughs> that was that one right here, I think. Right? Like you like popsicles? <laughs> it's so I love you, Joe. <laughs> you know it's about to be Halloween. <laughs> Trick or treat. <laughs> oh, I'm afraid of the evil monkey. <laughs> he's over here in the closet. <laughs> Maybe he's a clown. <laughs> no. no, no, it's, I don't know, it's just... Show me you can have, now everyone knows who you are. This might be this might be the best portion of this podcast right now. I hope everyone Nobody's is still listening because if you tuned out, you're missing this. this is I don't want to keep on going. Cause Please do. Just just we're we're running like an hour over an hour, so let's get JC over here. Let's JC. get. <laughs> so fun. Thank you for oh, sorry. Yes, thank then thank you, Joey. So JC. Everyone's over here like at the going satellite, now. It's great. satellite conversation over here. Adult conversation is actually going on about meaningful <laughs> life direction. Last year, right? Yeah, so you're just here to visit? Is that what? Say hi. 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 Say hi. Oh, say hi. JC, get over here. Hey. I said I'm on a you satellite. Can't be the, you can't be a disembodied <laughs> voice. <laughs> a disembodied, that's right. I'm like out in the ozone right here. Okay, we got JC. Hi, the JC. Snoop zone. <laughs> Do I really have to come over? And <laughs> <laughs> All right. Excuse me. <laughs> and Danielle, you come over yeah, here. Danielle, come here. Get over here. Come on, we'll talk about your masters and your stuff over here. Come on. Right. We'll bring adult conversation into it. Absolutely. Adult wife conversation. Oh, come on. <laughs> you can send this to your mom and dad. You know, <laughs> you're, you're, sitting, you're sitting in a hotel after a nice dinner talking on the hodgepodge. I don't, think, I don't think anyone's going to be therapy. Joe's family guy impression. Wow. Who'd you do? Um, <laughs> we did, we did, 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 did you do them all? You have to come back and listen to it. There wasn't any. Yeah, you got to listen, listen to Eddie. You got to listen to the podcast. Really didn't sound like any I could do Eddie. <laughs> it was a mix of them all and all together. I right. told you. I do a good Eddie. I do a good Eddie impersonation. I, but I could do Eddie a little bit Star better. Wars. I'm just camera shy. Oh. So JC, scoot back about five. What feet it is, what it do. Yeah. Then, <laughs> that means what's up in Joe's town. In Joe's town, I'm oh. scared to go where Joe Word. lives. <laughs> <laughs> I am. The dirty D. Sorry, dirty Sorry dude. Dirty, dirty <laughs> D's, right, dude. Boys. dude. Lock and load, like man. <laughs> AR-15s, a couple nines. My it's, not, it's not like that, man. Do what you gotta changed. do. It's, it's actually turning into like a Chicago. Is it really? Yeah. So it's even worse then? No, not yet. Not yet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, so everything. I've only ever been in Chicago once. Flew in O'Hara. I stayed in the airport oh, like no, right outside like, of O'Hara. No. And it was just, not, and no offense, but just it was no, depressing. Not, and it was January. It was cold. Too, so it Once we got downtown, <laughs> it was all right. But oh man, standing out by the airport is like, oh my god, it's gray and dingy and 12 degrees and well, was scary. That time, no, it's not fun. It wasn't like so, Williamsport. Williamsport. It's a good time. Thanks for making fun of my city. I'm not making fun of it. <laughs> I love Williamsport too. I took my whole family on vacation there. Broadheadsville is awesome. Broadheadsville is the shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's like really close to the Poconos racetrack. And if you want to watch cars go around in circles. It's, oh, wait, we're in Nashville. Uh, NASCAR's baby. probably I was gonna say pretty you'll big around here. Down here yeah. <laughs> we're right now. Um, okay. So it's been like your fifth camp, right? Total. Not just the rich camps, but we did the Daniel Glass. We did the LA Rich. Correct. Fifth, fifth, fifth camp, yeah. Fifth camp, yes. Fifth. Lots of stuff. And, and mm -hmm. you know, you've been on a lot of podcasts too. So really, you know. We don't have much drum tacks, and uh, yeah, I've been on your podcast. Yeah. I got uh, Matt Dudley. Really I've here. been uh, on Around the Kit. I've been, as a matter of fact, I, we just got booked. There's a new podcast coming out. Uh, Johnny Miso is his name, and it's actually he's doing an educational, almost a podcast slash YouTube 
subscription channel on navigating the music business. Which wow, sounds riveting. I, I would watch. Yeah. I would watch. I was going to bring you on it. I would definitely watch about that. Three seconds ago. I would definitely watch that, but don't watch <laughs> that. But we'll, we'll watch it because it's really. But but don't watch it. But but watch it. Are we looking into the light here <laughs> or the camera? So, uh, Danielle. Oh, you know, this full is disclosure high. though, I don't think we told Danielle that this is, we're actually on camera. Yeah. We're not just talking. Oh, but your hair. Like, you, know, you got yeah. that rocking we're, hair though. But your hair is beautiful. Oh, thank you. This yes. guy is slick, man. <laughs> yes, he had some great compliments on hair I've never heard slick. before. Yeah. 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 I haven't smelled it yet though. <laughs> Do you want to <laughs> smell it on camera? Is that? Yeah, yeah. He did it. Yeah. Hey, he's done it to all of us. Oh, it's, it smell. What do you? That does smell really good. <laughs> um, that's a that's a trade. This secret. got really <laughs> creepy and weird. <laughs> yeah. But no, it is super cool hair. And thank you, thank you. Yes. I don't think you answered me today. I did What's ask you. I was like, do you wake up and does it look like that, or is you sometimes have to work at it? it's kind of flat sometimes if I sleep on one side or you know it gets a little shoveled and then you just shovel it back and. See, that's like it's Pretty just a easy. get up and go. It's it really might be nice. really nice to do a special if if maybe you stay at the hotel tonight and then we film you in the morning. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm joking. Wow. I'm, t- I'm totally you hitting on her on camera. And this is terrible. Like I'm about different pop- levels of creepy. <laughs> yeah. It's Halloween no, weekend, it's, though. It makes okay. sense. Right. Yeah, we'll yeah, go with true. the theme. There's not even a and program. everyone left. I just feel yeah. weird right now, like in front of a light. Greg's <laughs> right. wide Chuck's awake. Here, Joe's like here. Greg's here. Because he slept all day. Yeah. That's all right. Every chance he got. But yes. <laughs> but Daniel, what brings you? Yes. What brings you here? I'm just being creepy. Oh, yes. um, yes. long version, short version. We'll go with short because I'm short. not sure how much camera tape I have. Yeah, left. no, it's totally fine. Um, I met Rich and um, I met JC at NAM and I was like, hey, I hear about this drummer's jam. I want to be a part of it. Let me volunteer. And they're like, okay. So that's why I'm here. That's a bad story because do you know how many people tell him that? And then, really? Like, he turns them down. <laughs> See, well, I, I, I did something. It's the hair. It's the smell. Like, I must yeah. have turned oh. him over, I so guess. You went right to the, right to the front yeah. of the list. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and well seven, well done, JC. Well done. emails over a month and a half of what can I do? I know. Poor what guy. What can I do? What can, can I, I do something? How about now? Yeah, how, how about, about now? now? Exactly. <laughs> what about um, now? I actually had her write, handwrite a list today, and then mm. five minutes later asked her if she could transpose it into an email. Yeah. Which was that I didn't do that on purpose, but after then I felt bad. Like, after yeah. I had her write the whole list, do I was what like, you got to do. Uh, you this know? would be better if we sent it in an email. <laughs> No, it's worked out well. This is, it's yes, I'm, it's, I'm just it's here for, I'm here for JC and Rich. That's why I'm here. So, he's doing a good job. Everybody's doing a good job. Yeah. Yes. Except for me. No, dude. Uh, All right, well, you're the Mugen. <laughs> we're gonna wrap this up yes. because we've gone like over an hour, and I'm not. I hope I still have memory card left. Camera might, might not even be on. Might not be. Hey. We might just have creepy audio. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go around the table <laughs> quick. Greg, get over here. Why'd you even leave? You're leaving oh, empty chairs. Here, My phone is blown up since I've been. Wow. Anyway, <laughs> um, so. Let's go around the room. It's Halloween. Let's start with 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 Mr. Joe. That means you give him the mic, <laughs> and we'll pass it. Hey there. Okay. Favorite horror flick since it's Halloween again? Oh, probably The Shining. Oh my God, I love The Shining. It's just really I weird. love you, Joe. Classic. I love you so much. He had it on. I've he never had the seen shirt it. Yesterday. You've never seen The I've Shining? I've never seen The Shining. I've I've what? always seen you know oh, Red Rum, yeah, but. This. <laughs> so, but you know it though. Yeah. Everybody knows Everybody. Red Rum. You know. Uh, I've never seen it. No. It's, it's, sad. it's gonna happen. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we could watch it sometime. It's probably going to happen tonight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's go to Greg. Watch it sometime. Psycho. Psycho? Psycho always and forever. I thought you were calling Take it. Psycho. Yeah. <laughs> let's go to JC and see if his has changed since last like year. Oh, I remember. Wait, wait, I can't say it again. No. Although, because it honestly, it's changed. Yeah? Magnolia? Nope. Evil Dead. Yeah, you like the Evil, evil Dead? Wait. Original remake. Yeah. Ash Zone. Original. Original, okay. Only because I found on Showtime Ash Zone and the, or is it Ash versus Ash versus, versus Evil, the, Evil Dead. And it's yeah. amazing. It just rekindled my, it right. was, it was It's a good amazing. show. It's a great it show. very good show. I, I, I can't answer that question. I don't have one. I, I, I have to see The Shining to see if that would be a fave, I think. 
I want to take back all the compliments, all the hitting on you that I've done. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. Touche. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But that's interesting. You don't yeah, not no. into the whole. I'm, I'm, I get scared. I'm a kind of a girl. I don't like getting scared. You know. She's not it's into. I'm not into that thing. Yeah. Interesting. In- yeah. Okay. Next. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Too much of my life has come out, poured out. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Chuck. Love you, Chuck. Um. Well, I don't watch any like modern horror movies like now, but I would say like all the Halloween movies from back in like the Michael Myers. That's, yeah. that's riches. That's yeah, riches. There's something about someone original. getting chased down and stabbed. Yeah. I just like to watch oh, yeah. it. Yeah. And it's just Bizarre. fun. I thought, you, I thought you were gonna say like something like we just make our own. <laughs> no, well, I mean, you could. Western PA. Yeah, Western, Southwest PA. We do some weird things up there. We just all them, all them country folk out there. They just oh, man, stabbing people. Like no, and mine, just, <laughs> and mine actually <laughs> changed. I was just gonna like, say, yeah. We talk about Detroit for like thirty. It's, do- it's not documented over there. That's what for like thirty years. Ghostbusters was my favorite, but now it's like Goodwill Hunting. So, wow. <laughs> favorite horror film? Yeah. Wow, yeah. we need to. Talk. Yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> Let the no, hitting on begin on again. A little side trip with Brady, two taxis, and about a seven block walk to go to the firehouse where they shot. And then it's under yeah, construction. It's under construction. Yeah, it, was, it was still fun that we did Wait, that. Right? There were there were giant tarps yeah. and there was all the scaffolding on the outside. And all you could see was, was he goes, Brady goes, Brady goes, Brady goes, look at looking on the ground right here. There was something I don't even remember what it was. The next day they brought the new Ecto one. They cleaned and they a took bunch. All of it all. Yeah. So we really did. We took a taxi like for probably 25 minutes and then walked seven blocks. And to we, scumbags and superstars. We turned, yeah. we turned the corner it's and awesome. the whole building was covered in a big <laughs> sheet. <laughs> <laughs> scumbags and superstars though was a cool amazing. Shop. Yes. That was a cool shop. Scumbags and superstars That was a cool. What shop. up? Uh, okay. Well, thanks for being on my show, guys. Are we and rapping? Yeah, we're rapping. Absolutely. I miss the beanbag. So. It's not Sorry. a damn beanbag. Love bean sack. Love sack. <laughs> Drum tax. Awesome. Mugen Music Group. Yeah. Greg Snook. I don't know if you got any plugs. You don't deserve wow. plugs yet. Chuck, you got any plugs? Wow. Yeah. I think he meant things to say, not like whatever. I mean, he's been asking me a lot of weird questions tonight, really so yeah. So plugs wasn't. Yeah, like I'm pretty far, sure like he reach. may end up in my room in the morning when I wake up and. <laughs> To go to the front desk and get a key. Lock the door. <laughs> lock the door. <laughs> You'll see his eye. <laughs> Look, he's not. Like, he's out. <laughs> yeah. He didn't do the mic drop. <laughs> he didn't. Are we out? Are we out? <laughs> hey, we're still recording. That's All right. Cool. All right. All right. Well, let me say bye. All right. But you'll just do. You can do some cool outro music. Dun, 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 dun. No. Um, okay. <laughs> well, red rum. Um, Eddie. <laughs> you don't understand that because you haven't seen the movie. Because you didn't see the movie, I was just going to say, wow. What's wrong? What's Brady doing Tony. now? Yeah. This is Tony. I feel so awkward. It's so awkward in here right now. I'm going to steal that picture, though, and that plant. <laughs> All right. The sconces. Nightcap. Okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thanks for watching. Cheers. I really, yeah. I apologize for some of this podcast. It was, it got interesting, with everybody, honestly. But more podcasts to come. I haven't done one in a year. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. 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 This wow. is episode eleven. Wow. So. Thank you so much, everybody. And Cheers. as as a famous drummer once said, peace and love, peace and love. <laughs> <laughs>